Greetings, viewers. This is Every TV News Podcast live from the headquarters in Asmara. It's 10 30 p.m. Thursday, 24th of March. I'm the reporter Miram Johannes with your daily updates, and here's a rundown of the top stories for tonight's English news segment. More victory by Eritrean cyclists. Seminars of Nationals in Germany. North Korea test fires first intercontinental ballistic missile since 2017. 7,000 Boko Haram and other fighters surrender in a week in Nigeria. On to the details for the local news. Eritrea has won one gold, three silver and two bronze medals today in individual time trials ITT at the African Road Cycling Championships in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt. Accordingly, at the individual time trials ITT, elite category, Henok Mulubrahan won the silver medal, Adam Dawit and Sanait Futsum won the silver and bronze medals, respectively. At the individual time trials ITT male junior category, Akhlilu Arafaina won the gold medal, and Jonas Tekie won the silver medal. In the junior female category, Sarun Tuhlu won a bronze medal. Nationals in Germany conducted a virtual seminar focusing on the objective situation in the homeland as well as regional developments. The seminar has been in continuation of the programs the nationals in various cities of Germany have been conducting from March 5 to 19. At the seminar in which over 500 nationals participated, Mr. Johannes Woldu, first secretary at the Eritrean Embassy, and Mr. Musef Sahaye, secretary of the National Committee, stated that strengthening organizational capacity and the unity of the national organizations is a timely task and that strong effort will be exerted to that end. Mr. Kibra Abtaghaste, charged the affairs at the Eritrean Embassy, also gave a seminar on the role of Eritrean women in the struggle for independence and in safeguarding national sovereignty as well as history of the global struggle of women. The chairperson of the National Union of Eritrean Women branch in Germany, Ms. Orba Afurki, on her part, gave extensive briefing on the role the Eritrean women pl played in realizing the national independence and in safeguarding national sovereignty, ensuring social justice as well as gender equality. Commending the participation and contribution of Eritrean women in the national affairs, Mr. Kahsai Tawolde, Head of Public and Community Affairs at the Eritrean Embassy, called for reinforced participation for a better outcome. The event has been highlighted with cultural and artistic programs. The Youth Workers' Organization in Barantu Subzone held its sixth Congress on the 22nd of March under the theme Awareness and Organization Foundation of Novel History. Speaking at the occasion, Mr. Abdel Wahab Suleiman, head of the National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students Branch in the Subzone, presented a report focusing on the activities conducted in the past three years, including the effort to strengthen awareness and organization of the youth as well as on the participation of the youth in development programs. Mr. Marek Oskar Mazin, head of political and organizational affairs of the National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students in the Gashbarka region, called for a coordinated effort with the view to ensure the participation of the youth in the national affairs. Ambassador Mahmoud Ali Hurui, governor of Gashbarka region, on his part, called on the youth to take advantage of the opportunities being provided and underpin participation in the national affairs. At the Congress, a new executive committee has been elected for three years' term. Election of area administrators and managing directors, as well as village coordinators, was conducted in the 12 administrative areas of Galalo subzone, northern Red Sea region, from the 1st to the 20th of March. According to, to the report, 24 area administrators and managing directors, as well as 54 village coordinators, including 15 females, have been elected. Commending the strong participation the residents demonstrated during the election process, Mr. Mahmoud Ibrahim, administrator of the subzone, called on the newly elected to diligently serve the people that bestowed trust on them. Mr. Mahmoud also called for reinforced 
effort in motivating and encouraging the residents to strengthen participation in the implementation of the development programs. Mr. Ibrahim Ali Sheikh, chairman of the Northern Red Sea Assembly, pointed out that the awareness raising activity conducted prior to the election has contributed in the successful implementation of the program. He also called on the area administrators and managing directors to serve the people that elected them with dedication. The newly elected on their part expressed conviction to live up to the expectation of the people that elected them. Gal Alu subzone is resident to about 7,000 families. We'll be right back with the international news after the short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Tokyo and Seoul said North Korea fired a new intercontinental ballistic missile today as they voiced outrage at Pyongyang's most powerful launch since 2017. South Korea's military said it had fired missiles from ground, sea and air in response. Pyongyang has launched nearly a dozen weapon tests this year in unprecedented spree in defiance of UN sanctions. But long-range and nuclear tests such as the one conducted today have been paused since leader Kim Jong-un met then US President Donald Trump for a bout of doomed diplomacy which collapsed in 2019. The missile was fired today afternoon from Sunan, likely the same site as a failed test last week, and had a range of 6,200 kilometers. According to the Japanese government, the missile flew for 71 minutes and landed in Japan's territorial waters. According to Nigerian local media reports, some 7,000 members of the Islamic State West Africa province, ISWAP, and Boko Haram have surrendered in northeast Nigeria in the past week. On Wednesday, the news agency of Nigeria quoted Major General Christopher Musa, a top commander in the region, as saying that an onslaught targeting ISWAP and Boko Haram fighters has continued to record a significant success. Musa said at least 7,000 Boko Haram and ISWAP members surrendered in the last week during the operations. The general added the surrendering fighters and their families are expected to be profiled by the Nigerian army and other stakeholders before they go undergo rehabilitation procedures. According to the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs in Nigeria, about 350,000 people have been killed and 3 million civilians displaced in more than a decade of fighting in the country. Following is a recap of tonight's major headlines. More victory by Eritrean cyclists. Seminar of Nationals in Germany. North Korea test fires first intercontinental ballistic missile since 2017. 7,000 Boko Haram and other fighters surrender in a week in Nigeria. That's all from us for now. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.